Hello everyone. I'm glad y'all are here and I uh, hope you have some time you can spend with me. I believe the lesson will be edifying. It'll take a while to sort through everything, but this is the life of Aaron and David. And there's Benjamin down here. He's a part of it too. But this this is over a, a lifetime span. And Benjamin... I don't know why I use these names, but Benjamin means the son of the right hand. David, King David was a man after God's own heart, and Aaron was the first high priest of Israel. But uh, as I said before, this is the life of these two men. This one's in church. This one here. He's like the prodigal son. And this is the thing about this lesson. It started out as uh, teaching about false doctrine and false teachers and their effect they have on the uh, men of God. But then it took me in all these other, like, parables, you know, the sower, the... The wise man and the fool, and uh, the prodigal son, the lost sheep, all this is intertwined in this story I'm about to present. But we can go ahead and get started, and I've made ten points about these two men. And uh, number one, David, David, he's a young man, both of them grew up together. David knows he's a sinner and he believes in his heart Jesus is the Son of God. He confesses, repents, and is born again. And you can turn to these uh, verses if you want to, but uh, I'm going to be going through them so fast, you know, you might just want to listen and maybe look at them later. Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Aaron does not believe in his heart and makes a false profession. Romans 10.10 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. David grows in faith and is baptized. Romans ten seventeen. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So it's important to hear the true word of God. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Aaron pretends faith and is baptized. Matthew fifteen eight. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So this is the condition of a lot of people. They just profess. And in this case, he's pretending his faith. He does good deeds before men. David does good works and praise, James 1, 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be doers. It reminds me of an employee. If you're the boss man and you tell an employee to 
do something. And he said, okay. And he walks away and doesn't do it, you know. What good is that? What kind of employee is he? This is the same thing. Be ye doers of the word. And not here is only deceiving your own selves. Aaron does good deeds before men and prays. Matthew 6, 2. See, these are just companion verses to what's going on in their lives. Matthew 6, 2. Therefore, this is the Lord speaking, therefore, when you doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. So the good things that you do for people, any money that you give for charity, don't do it for in the eyes of man that you may have glory of men a lot of us won't be seen by other people and get recognition amen but he's telling us not to do that david he recognizes his sin nature and is honest with himself compares his life with others Continually sins, ask forgiveness, and repents. James 1, 14, 16. I can tell you one thing right now, we, what David was doing wrong, and he was comparing his life with others, how others looked like they were doing so well and serving God, and he took his eyes off the Lord and started watching man. He's understanding that he, he's a babe in Christ and he still has that sin nature. And he continually asks for forgiveness and repents. James 1, 14 through 16. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. He's talking to the church. He's not talking to the people outside. He's talking to believers. Do not err, my beloved brethren. He doesn't fully understand what repentance is either. Like I said, he's just a babe in Christ. It does seem like Aaron does everything just right. Recognizes his sin, but he hides them. But on the surface, it looks like he's doing real well. Does not honestly evaluate himself and becomes self-deceived. Galatians 6, 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. He's starting to get the picture about being self-deceived and the thinking you're something you're not. David, he's looking at Folks, and he's thinking they're something that they're not a lot of times. The fourth, taught lost salvation and salvation by works. Lives in doubt, in doubt of his own salvation. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Spiritually immature begins to believe he's lost. How can you have faith if you're taught 
that your salvation hinges on what you do. Second Corinthians 13, 5. I think y'all probably starting to get the picture. Lord came out against false teachers. And you think about it, all the churches that are around and all the different denominations. And you think your church is the true church. That's how we got all these denominations. In churches because of false teachers and the false doctrine wasn't put out out of the church the true church 2 Corinthians 13 5 examine yourselves amen whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be a reprobate. He's telling the Christians, examine yourselves. Know ye not how that Jesus Christ is in you, a true believer, except ye be reprobates. This is what this young man is starting to believe, David, comparing himself to other people. But he knows Aaron. Aaron attends church regularly, deceives himself, and believes he's not a sinner. Can you imagine that? Believing you're not a sinner? First John one eight. Evidently, it was a a problem even in the uh, beginning of the church because they talk about it. First John one eight. If we say that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. What a terrible place to be. How can you be saved if you don't believe you're a sinner? David's deceived by false doctrine and teachers loses that blessed assurance and leaves this unscriptural church full of guilt and unworthiness, not as a hypocrite, but a believer in despair, believing in lost salvation because he couldn't be good enough. Matthew twenty four eleven. You see the problem with false doctrine? This isn't an excuse. Now, this isn't, don't take this as an excuse for David. I suppose if he had studied his Bible more on his own, he would have known better. And he would have grown. And he would have realized that his faith grows and his repentance, he matures as a Christian by what? By studying God's word. Matthew twenty four eleven. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. 
Now you, both these men are deceived at this point. One's self-deceived and the other's deceived by false doctrine, by false teachers. What a terrible place to be for both of them. Aaron continues to live in hidden, unforgiven sin, indifferent to David leaving the church. How many of us have ever watched a brother or sister leave a church and never check on them? How much love do we have for each other, honestly? 1 John 2.19 Let, let brothers and sisters just walk away. And here's what a lot of people believe. They went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You could say I'm taking this out of context, but I'm doing it on purpose to make a point. They were not all of us. Who's all of us? People that are self-deceived, a lot of them. That's why they let brothers and sisters walk away. Because they're full of their own self-righteousness. They were not all of us. Having his faith overthrown, this is David, lost hope in his Savior, lives in open rebellion. Rebellion ain't nothing but sin against God. Second Timothy two, seventeen and eighteen. Here we're talking about two false teachers that were in the church and how they were dealt with. Verse seventeen and eighteen. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and over the overthrow the faith of some. It wouldn't be in here if it wasn't true. The overthrowing of the faith of some. <clears throat> subvert. Overthrow means to subvert. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What happens when you're taught by false teachers? And how can... People sit there and listen when they know better. The only way they could that I can see, I can't say for them, but if they believe it, then they have to be self-deceived. <clears throat> if you believe you can lose your salvation, <clears throat> If you believe you can lose your salvation, how can you sing songs like Amazing Grace and Blessed Assurance? How is that possible? Unless you're enveloped in your own self-righteousness. In your mind that you're saved. If somebody doesn't take it uh, seriously, doesn't take their faith seriously, it's not going to bother them. 
But somebody like David that takes it serious, it's going to bother him. And he made a lot of wrong moves. Aaron becomes a deacon, Sunday school teacher, and church song leader, only to magnify himself. Matthew 15, 9. I hate talking about this. Matthew 15, 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. How much worse can it be today than it was back then? All the different churches. What's a person that's searching for Jesus? What are they to do? Years later, part of his life lost. Without being of any service to God, he wasn't going to stay in there and be a hypocrite. Burdened and humbled and wanting fellowship with God, it's many years later he prays and reads his children's Bible and seeks forgiveness. James 4.10 Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. To humble yourself is to bring yourself low. He said, be his children. And we got to share our pride and approach his throne of grace. Aaron's respected in the church, putting on a show and proud of his accomplishments. Philippians 318. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping. This is Paul talking to the brethren at the church in Philippi. I have told you often, now tell you weeping. This is what I was just talking about. This is sad to even talk about this, but he told them often, even weeping at that moment, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. They're called antichrists in other places, false teachers, hypocrites. Antichrist. David's neighbor, Benjamin. It's going to get good now, folks. Invites him to his church. David prays and asks for forgiveness. Repents. Faith renewed through sound doctrine. Amen. 
1 John 1, 9. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. If you if you don't know the Lord, I just urge you to read. This Bible isn't anything to somebody that doesn't believe. You have to believe. And have faith that this is the word of God and that Jesus is who he said he was. And faith comes by hearing. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. We serve a just God to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Be not deceived. He is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. Aaron hears David is attending another church and thinks all he has done is turn over a new leaf because of his life of sin. Matthew 23, 28. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Iniquity, iniquity meaning evil. But outwardly you appear righteous unto men. David continues on in this church that Benjamin stopped inviting him to his church. And, and Lord, I pray, if, if you don't know of Benjamin, I pray that the Lord will send one into your life. Reassured he is a, David is a son of God. He is freed from the bondage of man's doctrine. Second Timothy two nineteen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Depart from iniquity. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth that them that are his. Amen. The eternal security of the believer. Having this seal. Aaron sees David, uh, let's see. I think I got messed up. I don't remember exactly where I was now. I got plum excited. <laughs> Second Timothy two nineteen. Sees David 
Aaron sees David and questions his salvation because of his life of sin. Matthew 7, 5. I was on track. Matthew 7, 5. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. This is Jesus speaking. Aaron questioning the salvation of his brother. Returning back into the fold of a scriptural church. David, building on that blessed foundation, never more to depart. His salvation is secure. He knows he is Jesus's. He knows he belongs to Jesus. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of of the Son of God. Amen. Aaron continues to live in self-deception and enjoys the worldly treasures he heaped up for himself. Matthew seven twenty three. And then, this is Lord speaking, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Can you imagine David witnessing that Aaron, Aaron's been in church all this time as a deacon, respected by the brethren, I hope anybody that says they know God, I pray that they're not in this condition. And don't keep the hypocrites, don't let the hypocrites keep you out of church. I've heard that a lot too. We're all sinners. By God's grace, there go I. I love each and every one of you with a Christian love. I appreciate you spending a little time with me in the Word. And Lord willing, we'll see you later.